Hi Atari friends, in this video I would like to demonstrate for you the Tubo Freezer upgrade. This Tubo Freezer upgrade is for the Atari XL and XE model. The original project for the Tubo Freezer was created in 1987 by Bernard Engel and later he revised it in 2005 to, for a newer model and recently Matthias Reichel designed the external version that plugs into the Atari PBI port. So this actually plugs on the back of the Atari Excel computer or the Atari XE. If you have an Atari Excel, you need to use the Excel extension. It plugs on the back of the computer and the tuber freezer goes on top. And if you have an Atari XE machine, then there is also an XC extension that plugs on the back of the Atari XE cartridge port and ECI port. And because you are using the cartridge port, there is an extra cartridge slot where you can st stick your cartridge over there. The Turbo Freezer is an external upgrade. It does not require to do any soldering. I'm going to demonstrate it on an Atari 600 Excel that there is no extra operating system of upgrade beside to the fact that this was machine was upgraded to 64k so if you want to use the turbo freezer you have to at least have a 64k machine Atari 800 Excel for example I'm using the 600 Excel that has a built-in 64k the turbo freezer have several switches on top the two left switches are used for the cartridge emulation and I will demonstrate it during this video the second switch is called Old OS. By switching it to the right, the Atari XL will boot with an old operating system from the old 400 and 800. So you can run all software without the need of using the translator tool. If you switch it on, if I switch this switch to the right, then Atari computer will boot to the memo pad. The third switch is called Stereo and it allow you to, to give support for computer that has the dual pokey a stereo upgrade so the freezer can also capture the second pokey chip and the fourth switch switch over here it's called ram disk the tuber freezer also upgrades the machine to 512k so by switching this to the right i'm going to get 512k extra memory to this atari computer it will allow you to run all those nice demos without having to do any special uh, soldering. So let's going to plug, let's plug this tuber freezer on top of the uh, extension. Plug it, plug this to on to the PBI port, and switch the computer on and see what we get. Okay, we have connected everything, and now we're going to switch on the screen and turn on the Atari computer. Okay, so what we're gonna have is when this upgrade is connected on the back of the computer, it's completely invisible to the Atari machine, nothing happens. And when I push the freezer button here on top, I'm gonna get to the Tubo Freezer menu. The Tubo Freezer menu will allow, you, allow me to freeze or capture a snapshot of the Atari computer memory, including all the special custom chips registers, and save it either to an internal RAM of the freezer or to an external disk, an external floppy disk. Switch the disk drive on. And so let's see a quick demo of what it can do. I'm going to take a floppy here. This is a game called Touchdown Fo Football from Electronic Arts. This is the original floppy. It comes protected with a special protection that if you try to copy this disk, the copy would not work. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put the floppy inside the computer and I'm going to boot the machine. So now the game loads. This is the area where the software looks for the protection. 
double sectors or short sectors or fuzzy sector and when it's found the special sectors on those floppy it will continue to load the game Let's see if it boots. No, probably they didn't load down. Let's try. This drive is a, is a special drive. It's the Mega Speedy drive. And it was set to a custom ROM. Some protected disk does not like those custom ROMs when they boot. So I'm going to switch just to the standard ROM of the drive. I already ma made a video explaining about the Mega Speedy and how it does. And this is a very important tip. If you have a floppy that is protected, not just with a simple bad sector, but with a special custom track, some upgrades like the Happy or the Duplicator will not allow you to load this disk and you have to use special software like slow mode tool to convert the drive into a, a standard speed so now i s use this special toggle sw switch here to change it to a normal drive and now i'm loading the touchdown football the drive detected the protection on the floppy and it's going on and uh, booting into the disk. So right now we are inside the game, inside the tool. At any point I can push the button on top of the freezer and I immediately freezed the software. If I want to go back to the software, I just push the space and I'm going back into the software when it's going and loading the next stage, asking me if, if I want to continue to play the game, player versus player, player versus computer and so on. Let's freeze it again and see some of the tools that we get. First, before we, got, we go into the freezing feature, there is a feature here called DOS and a debugger. I'm gonna push the D and it will take me into um, a tool that I can actually display the data of the Atari computer. So if I push D, I can actually display an, an area in the memory and see if it contains anything. I can also uh, view it as an assembly language. Um, and examine and see the code in assembly that actually the software is running on the computer. I can also change the values here. If I want to change something in the code, I can change that if there is a if I detected the code where I can see the number of lives, I can go in and increase the number of lives on the fly. Uh, I can also type vector and see all the different Atari vectors that the um, software has loaded. I can see where my display list located, when is the run address, the initialization address, uh, the vertical blank interrupts, where, which, co which area in the memory they go to, and I can go in and disassemble those. So uh, uh, this is very nice. Uh, there was also DOS features. If this was a DOS diskette, I can also look at the directory. Right now, this is a not a DOS diskette, so the, there is no directory to view. I can also copy file, rename file, using this uh, small tool. So let's exit or quit and go back to the freezer. So we froze the memory, we can, also, we can disassemble it, analyze it. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take out the original diskette of the game and I'm going to put here a blank diskette. I should have here something over right here. Let's take a blank floppy and put it into the drive. And I'm going to save the freeze RAM 
to an external device. I'm going to push the letter S and I can save it to a cassette, to a tape, or to a, to a boot floppy or to a file. I'm going to save it to a boot floppy. So right now, the freezer write a snapshot of the current status of the computer into a boot floppy. This means that I can later take this floppy to any other place, to any other computer and boot the game out of this floppy. By doing so, I bypassed the protection and I basically created a hacked or a cracked version of the touchdown football game. This can work with any game or any software that you have. So you can go ahead and copy the original software with a normal sector copier and the sector copier will not copy the protection but you can hack the protection using this Turbo Freezer tool. So let's finish, let it write and then we will try to boot the software from this drive. So we finished writing the snapshot. I'm going to do right now, I'm going to just reset the computer. And now I'm booting whatever I'm created. The Turbo Freezer right now is invisible. I can check it out or use another computer to demonstrate. But just I created a, a hacked version or a cracked version of the game. Let's wait for it to finish booting and see what we get. Okay, so we are exactly where we at, we're at. We were at that stage where we want to check, select which uh, mode we want to play, and next is we want to ask if we want to play a quarter or 15 or 10 or 5 minutes. So we booted the game out of an unprotected floppy uh, on a standard computer. This is one thing that you could do with the Turbo Freezer. Another thing you could do, you can take a cartridge, I'm going to take the Pitfall cartridge, for example. Boot the, the Atari computer into the cartridge game. This is Pitfall 2. I'm going to push the Freeze option. And I'm going to click the S, B. And I'm, now I'm creating a boot floppy of the cartridge. So it's going to take about a, about a minute to write and the Turbo Freezer will copy the cartridge and the content of the RAM if the cartridge used that and will create a boot version of the Pitfall game. This is a very easy and simple tool to port, to convert cartridges into a boot floppies into a bootable floppies. Okay, so we are done. We're going to switch off the Atari computer, take out the cartridge. We're going to boot the Atari computer out of the floppy that we created. It's going to take about a minute to boot. Again, we can take out the Turbo Freezer. The Turbo Freezer right now is, is invincible to the Atari computer. We are just booting the floppy that we created using the Turbo Freezer, but we don't need it right now at this stage. So let's wait for it to 
finish you can go ahead and use this time just to connect the joystick and we are in the game right now we just hacked a cartridge and converted it into a boot file you can just start and play the game okay what else we can do we can do even more let's put the cartridge back in we can freeze and we can save the frozen snapshot into the RAM the programmable RAM of the Turbo Freezer itself. So we don't have to save it to a floppy. We can just click F and we store it inside the RAM of the Turbo Freezer very quickly. And of course, if you want to play the, the cartridge, we have to have the Turbo Freezer upgrade. When we save it to floppy, we can just send it any, to anyone and you can just play the game. So let me just take this out and just show you what happened. I'm just gonna to go to the freeze menu and I'm gonna click on the letter C, to execute the freeze RAM. And we are in the pitfall game because it loaded out of the internal RAM of the tuber freezer. But the neat thing about it, okay, let's go to the cartridge. Let's start the game. Let's play a bit. So we froze the game at a certain stage or a level of the game itself and you can save the freeze RAM pushing the letter F into the internal memory of the freezer or we can do what we did in the beginning, we can save it to a floppy and we can take out the cartridge, turn on the Atari computer, switch on the freezer and let's execute the freeze RAM. And we are in exactly the same stage that we stopped. So we can continue and play the game from a certain location. Let's switch off the Atari computer. Put the cartridge back in. So what we did right now is we were able to freeze the memory in a certain spot of the game and uh, continue to play that game from that exact location. So this is very neat is that you don't have to, you don't have, to, if you have a, a, a game that you would like to save it at the end of the day and continue to play it later the next day or the next week, you can just save where you at and continue and play with it later. Let me just take out the <coughs> Pitfall, let's put another cartridge, that puts the Atari logo cartridge in. Let's go in and let's save the freezed uh, logo program into the, let's first put logo. Okay, so we're inside logo, the programming language. You can save that into the RAM disk. 
let's use the block zero, the first block. So we did that. We can take out the logo cartridge and switch on the freezer tool. So we can now execute the saved location where we did it to the RAM disk at location zero. You have 15, 16 slots here. We can put 64K block of RAM. And we are inside logo and we can go in and do that with several cartridges and put it in different slot. So we can go in and do programming. Let's go back and let's execute the freeze RAM. Remember we did it earlier. And we can continue and play the game. So we actually can do it for several software and several tools. Very nice feature. So you can save the freeze RAM, any software that you boot, either to a floppy, to a file, to a tape, or to the internal memory of the tube of freezer. If you have several games, several cartridges, you can save them to the different slots and uh, do your programming, or uh, it will also save your RAM data, not only the ROM. Next, let's look at the cartridge emulation. In order to operate the cartridge emulation, I have to switch the cartridge emulation switches on. So let me switch, do that, switch off the Atari computer, switch the two switches on the left here to the right side, the cartridge emulation and flash write feature, switch the Atari computer on, and I am right now in the turbo cartridge mode, cart emulation. This feature allows me to upload several ROM images into the ROM of the Turbo Freezer. And I can do it out of a file. Let me show you an example. First, let me, let's delete anything right now. Right now there is no cartridge set up in the system. It's uh, right now blank. So what I'm gonna do now, and I'm, is I'm going to, to uh, boot, switch off the cartridge slot. Okay, let's click on the letter O. Right now it's off, okay, good. So I'm gonna switch on the drive and I'm gonna put in a floppy with the software that comes with the Turbo Freezer. So let's, let's boot the software. Just a tool, it's tool under my DOS. The tool called flash.com. So let's load that. So this tool will allow, allow us to load cartridge ROM images into the tube of freezer memory. So let's do that. It's option number one. I'm going to use the start with the first bank. Every, each bank is an 8K. So I'm going to load the first bank. And uh, I'm just not just going to tell how many banks to use. I'll just let it run to the end of the file. And the file is on drive number three. Actually, it's using my SIO2 PC. And it's going to be the hero ROM. So it's loading out of the SIO2 PC, a 16K ROM image, and it's gonna write, re write it into two banks. Now it's writing it to the second bank, bank number zero and bank number one. Excellent, so I just load a one 16K cartridge into the first two bank of the um, turbo freezer. Let's do another one, push the number one again. And bank number zero and bank number one are occupied. I'm going to start with bank number two and all the way until the file ends. 
and the file name is PowerStorm. Okay, so it's gonna read it to bank number two and bank number three. This is a 16K, again, 16K cartridge. Excellent. Let's do a third one. Bank number four now. And till the file ends, and let's try and load the 8K cartridge. Again, kaboom. Okay, so that's only took us one bank, one 8K bank. So we are done and we just copied some bunch of ROMs into the tuber freezer. Next, just go to the cart emulator, start the cartridge emulation, S. And let's configure the banks. So let's first start with the first game, the game Hero that we copied. Let's click on the emulator mode. This is a 16K cartridge. Actually, we can select from an 8K, 16K, Atari Max, or OSS cartridges. So we select a 16K cartridge, and we're starting with bank number zero. It's a ROM file. Uh, and the source is ROM area, Spartados is off, cold, it's going to call boot and art one is off. So we're going to do that and let's save this setting. Actually, it's already did that. So let's going to do this again. Just going to name it hero. Okay. So we save that and we're going to do the same thing again, mode 16K. And we're going to start at bank number two. That's the Power Star game. Save the setting to B. Power Star. And let's do the same thing to the new image that we loaded called the game Kaboom. Mode, it's an 8K cartridge. And the bank is starting at bank number four. And you're going to save the setting to the slot C. Okay. And now it's stored. So when we want to load a cartridge, one of the cartridge ROM images that we have selected and upload it into the Turbo Freezer, the only thing that we have to do is just load the settings. Let's go to the first one, Hero Game, push the letter A, and then Enter. And now we are playing the hero game from an emulated cartridge as if the cartridge was inserted inside the Atari computer. And if you're going to switch a game, go to the cart emulator, letter K, and load another settings, B Power Star, push enter. Now it's looking for, a, switch it off, it's looking for a DOS. Did something wrong? He made something wrong. Oh, mode OSS, that's not the right mode. It's a 16.4K. So it's 16K mode. And let's save the setting into this here. We had the wrong mode here. So now we have set the correct mode, the correct cartridge mode. We can load OSS means that you have to load either Max 65, Basic Excel, Basic XE. Those are the cartridge, those are the OSS cartridges. When we put the correct mode, we can go in and play the Power Star text adventure game. We can do the same thing. Exit, cartridge emulator, go to the Kaboom game. And now we should play the game Kaboom unless there's something wrong with our ROM image. No, again, it was wrong mode. I guess I haven't noticed. 
if this is an 8K, okay, game should start, good, we had a good ROM image, we just copied it into the Tuber Freezer. Well, guys, this is the Turbo Freezer. Allow us to freeze software into boot floppies, files or tapes, boot, freeze software or games into the external memory or to the internal memory of the Turbo Freezer. We can also do go to a, a debugger and examine the code, see what it does in real time. Or we can go to the cartridge emulation feature and actually load ROM images, ROM files into the Turbo Freezer, ROM file of, of real cartridges and select and play them uh, on the Atari Excel. That's all. I hope that you enjoyed this short video and until next time, keep enjoying your Atari.